headlines again for one Jamison Williams. We were just kind of digesting the fact that, okay, the suspension is here for some substance. We don't have too many details. Everyone's kind of being quiet on this thing. He's stepping up and taking responsibility, which is like at the very least, that's what you want to see if your name is going to be in this type of news. And now all of a sudden, this report comes out. And I want you to be able to share it. I know you have the official uh, report from WXYZ and the Lions. They actually shared an official report directly with uh, them as well. Yes, and uh, the, the article is titled, Detroit Police Investigate Why Lions Wide Receiver Jamison Williams Avoided Arrest After Gun Found in, in Car. So I want to read the article because the he I know the heavyweights did it last night, but for anybody who hasn't read it, for anybody who hasn't, a who hasn't had a chance, I just want to give context. Two weeks before he was suspended for violating the NFL's performance-enhancing drug policy, Detroit Lions wide receiver Jamison Williams was nearly arrested by Detroit police over a gun found in a vehicle. Now as a result of questions by 7 News Detroit, the department is investigating why Williams was released from custody after officers planned to take him to jail. The star wide receiver came into contact with police after midnight on October 8th when police pulled over a vehicle being driven by Williams' brother near the corner of Connor and Jefferson Avenue. The vehicle was stopped, police say, for speeding. When questioned by an officer, Williams' brother disclosed that there were two guns in the car, the first laid in the back seat, while the second, according to police, was under Williams' seat. Officers found that the gun in the back seat was registered to Williams' brother, who had a concealed pistol license, or CPL. While the gun under Williams' seat was registered to him, he did not possess a CPL, referring to uh, Jameson Williams. The officer concluded that was a problem and told Williams he was going to be taken into custody for carrying a concealed weapon. I play for the Lions, bro. I'm Jameson Williams, he said at one point. Minutes later, he said, bro, I play for the Detroit Lions. And I miss, it's clear from body camera footage that the officer does not know who Williams is, but repeatedly the wide receiver would remind him. Minutes after that, he said once more, bro, I play for the Lions, talking, referring to Jameson Williams. The officer told Williams that his position did not influence whether he would be arrested. At one point during the stop, Williams' brother told police that the gun belongs to him, but later on, Williams would admit that the gun was his. I got the gun for protection, Williams said. Do you know? Do you guys know where I live at? Detroit. Williams was handcuffed and placed in the back of, of the squad car. In an interview on Monday, Detroit Police Commander Michael McGinnis supported the officer's actions. I felt like there was probable cause to arrest, and he was under arrest by the patrol officer, McGinnis said, and because of that, he should have been conveyed to the Detroit Detention Center and processed. But Williams wasn't taken to jail. Instead, a supervisor was called to the scene. The department says that's not unusual for a high-profile stop and is a precaution to make sure that policy is followed in cases that could create media coverage. Within a few minutes, a sergeant arrived on the scene. Unlike the responding officers, the sergeant was a Lions fan and immediately recognized Ziz Williams' name. Body camera footage also showed that the sergeant's cell phone wallpaper was the Lions logo. Over the next 30 minutes, the sergeant would make a series of phone calls to higher ranking officials trying to determine if Williams needed to be arrested or if the driver's CPL covered both his and Williams' gun. At one point, the sergeant is seen leaning in to one of the arresting officers, whispering, I'm so mad at you two. Commander McGinnis, who reviewed the body camera, camera footage, said he believed the sergeant was referring to both arresting officers in a jovial way. After conferring with multiple supervisors, the sergeant made two more phone calls and appears, and it appears Williams is about to be taken, taken to jail. Be advised, he's coming in. You might want to make a special accommodation, the sergeant says in one phone call. He's going to be going for carrying a concealed weapon, he says, in another. But minutes later, everything seemingly changed. The sergeant spoke to a lieutenant who said Williams should be released from custody. The lieutenant's side of the conversation cannot be heard. Okay, beautiful. I'm good to let him go. The sergeant asked before hanging up, you're a bleeping hero. Thank you so much. Williams would be taken out of handcuffs. His gun was returned. A police report was not written, and no re warrant request was submitted. That is... Uh, that's basically the gist of it. Let me, there's a statement from Williams's lawyer. Yes, Williams's attorney, Todd Flood, released a statement to 7 News Detroit that reveals, on October 8th, my clients were pulled over for an alleged traffic violation. During the course of the stop, my clients were both cooperative and respectful with the police officers. With the two, 
pistols that were found in the vehicle, they were both properly registered and the driver in the vehicle had the proper credentials to carry them. We have cooperated with law enforcement and will continue to do so. And before I let you guys react to this, the Detroit Lions also released a statement to 7 News Detroit on Tuesday, which would have been uh, yesterday. Jameson made us aware immediately that he was a passenger in a routine traffic stop in October 8th. We discussed the incident with him and have kept the league informed of what we know. We understand he was released without incident or citation. It is now our understanding that the Detroit Police Department is reviewing the matter. Jameson has hired an attorney and we will not be commenting further out of respect for the legal process. And that's pretty much all, all that's important with that uh, article. And that was from uh, WXYZ Detroit written by What's his name? Ross Jones. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, there's a a, lo a lot to unpack there. <sighs> there's a lot to unpack there, and I think the word that uh, continues to be there is uh, a little bit of, uh, disappointment. Disappointment. Um, man, I don't even know where to really begin with it. I'm I'm hoping overall that with anybody, you know, for me, my family, for you all, for Jameson Williams that he just has some good people around him that can help with leadership, guidance, um, and honestly through situations and times like this right now uh, so that whatever the road is for for him, it's just success in his future. You know, sure. still a kid who's maturing. Still, a, honestly, you got to not say a kid, but a, a, a young man, an adult who's maturing, uh, who's learning. And at the very least, I'm hoping that through these situations to become less and less and that you put yourself in a position to realistically be there for all those kids in the city who you are going out there and making yourself present to. You want them to be able to look up to you and see a superhero. You don't want them to look up to you and see some of the ideology um, or, or stigma or culture or things that might not necessarily lead them to their best path of success. You want them to be able to look up and see somebody who's maturing somebody who's growing, somebody who's honestly taking the time and opportunity to think about other people as well. Think about what your actions will do. Like, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know, man. It's, 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 it's a tough one, man. That's, but that's where my mind at, at first uh, goes as it relates to uh, this situation. That's fair. KG, yeah. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, like Kool-Aid said, this is tough because I don't want to – I don't want to seem like J-Mo should be resolved of, of any responsibility in this – um, but I just know that there's a certain sector of the fan base that one won't understand why he's even has a gun in the first place yeah. Two, why this even happened. But I mean, I think the key things here is and, and shout out to WXYZ. I know they're the ones that broke the story. I got a lot of love for a lot of people that work in that building. Um, I thought the headline was a little bit misleading when they said there were multiple guns. There were only two guns in the vehicle. Both were registered. One had a CPL and one did not. Jameson Williams' brother had a CPL, which means you can carry concealed. Um, Jamo didn't have a CPL, but it was registered in the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. So, of course, he wasn't driving the vehicle. I think that's important as well because if he was driving the vehicle, then maybe he gets brought up on a whole different set of charges here. So, should he, the the yeah. the biggest thing J-Mo should have did in this case is had a CPL on that gun. And, and thank you for sharing sharing those details as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, because I'm a gun owner as well. I don't carry, I don't have a CPL just yet. But the one thing J-Mo should not have done is he shouldn't have, have had the gun on him without a CPL. Because if mm. you get pulled over, then you're damn near guaranteed to go to jail, you know, in, in most cases. Um, of course, he didn't in this case because the two officers, they didn't know who he was. But the lieutenant, the sergeant, my bad, the sergeant that pulled up did know who he was and was a Lions fan and they were going to take him to jail they were going to proceed to take him to jail the sergeant made a call to the lieutenant the lieutenant said hey okay we can let him go and then he gets absolved and everything is fine and i want to yeah. also point out that the lions knew about this this was right before the dallas cowboy game so he went to the lions he told them everything that he knew and they discussed that with the league and right now they're leaving it as b um mm -hmm. to let the legal process kind of take hold but they knew about this. He went and played a game after this. Yep. And then, of course, we know about the, the two-game uh, suspension for performance-enhancing drugs. When you look at the timing of everything, maybe did the NFL maybe subject him to testing after they found out about this gun you know, uh, situation? 
could be, got, could not be. I got my hunches. But <laughs> I, and, and like I said, I'm not trying to absolve J Mo of no. any responsibility because he does need to mature. He needs to yeah. learn better situational awareness in, in situations like this. But I don't want to, you know, I don't think it's the biggest thing in the world, especially if the team knew about it. It'd be different if the team didn't know and they were finding out as soon as we all did. Yeah. And maybe that's a problem. But I think he tried to take care of it as best he could. He didn't get arrested. That's more so on the Detroit police for not, you know, following their protocol and what they should have done. And I hate to be that guy, but this this kind of stuff happens all the time. And, and we can at the college level, at the pro mm -hmm. level, and we just never never hear about this type of stuff. I understand WXYZ. They wanted a story to break. Ross Jones, he's a great reporter, so I don't want to throw any shade on his name, but. I do understand why Channel 7 would, would break something like this. But ultimately, J-Mo does need to get better. He does need to yeah. be more careful in situations like this. But ultimately, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with that, you know, that's why my, my comments I started with really just maturity. The, the same one as before with the, you know, with the, the substances. It's just let's get to a place of maturity where there's just no noise. I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to hold judgment on his character as I will hope people will hold judgment on mine. Uh, and and honestly, from the details of it, he was responsible to a degree, lax in some other components, and that this was more or less, if we think about it in terms of um, other things, like, yo, get this stuff taken care of. Like, get, uh, we understand that you said it was what? It was registered, but he didn't have the. Yeah, it was registered license. in the state of Missouri, but he just didn't have a, a CPL. Just like I, I own a gun, but yeah. I keep it at home because I don't have a CPL. I can't just carry it wherever I go with yeah. me. I can't and carry it. And it's so tough to like compare it to like, like a, a car's fix it ticket. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's, a, it's a weapon. Because if but, it was an illegal gun, they would have had no choice but to take him to jail. Right, right. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, yeah, this, and that's where maturity is what blares in my head more than anything it's like we got to get to this place where we're all handling the responsibilities exactly. and all being accountable to what keeps us out of the uh, out of the news what keeps us uh the noise away what keeps us on the field what keeps us uh honestly as that role model because i i love the fact that he's very present in the city i love the fact that he doesn't shy away from me i love the fact that he's patronizing places that a lot of athletes don't patronize. Yes. I love the fact that J-Mo wants to be here, you know, and he's not shying away from it. And you know what, though? He's also not going and widely publicizing it either. No, you got not. other people that are talking about the fact that he's there. You have other businesses. You have other people who are, like, taking pictures and videos when he's in their establishments. And that's that's really what I want him to be able to protect. Yeah. You, are, you guys know how it can go here, especially with his talent. If he can put that together with a nice kind of noise free career he would be one of the one of the most unique figures in detroit sports uh history honestly especially with his proximity to being right smack dab in the middle of the city as most people say well do you guys go to the outskirts he's there yeah <laughs> he's yeah, there yes he is he 100 percent <laughs> is and uh jb before we uh, go to break and pick this back up after the break i want to hear your first your thoughts on this uh first and foremost KG, I respect you and Channel 7 as well, too. But you know what, Channel 7? You guys know you don't get paid extra for snitching. I don't even know why you <laughs> yeah. that bring us up right yeah. now at this point in time. Man, it's the voice <laughs> of reason I'm right there. I look, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, hey, you don't get paid extra for snitching. But I, I do don't. have to agree with KG as well, too. There needs to be a sense of maturity from JMO, and I don't want to give him all the blame as well, too. I know... You know, maybe he was in the process of getting his CPL. I, I don't really we know. We don't what know, was, yeah. What, yeah, we don't really know what exactly was going on. But I'm never going to tell anyone mm -hmm. to sit here and not protect themselves, especially being in the status that he is and everywhere that he goes and he hangs mm -hmm. out. Hell, we don't even know where he is on a like a day-to-day -day basis like that. He can just pop up anywhere. But, yes, above all means, yes, please protect yourself. But the cops play a, a role in this as well, too, in not doing the proper procedure. Like, there should have been probably a little bit more that they should have done in seeing that, all right, you know, you don't have your CPL on you. You know, we're going to detain you and hold you or do something like that. But at the same time, I'm not going to put all the blame on JMO for this one. But, yes, you he does need to mature up a little bit. And it's fine to have a gun, but just keep it at home if you don't have the proper paperwork on you at all times, man. This is just one of those maturity things that just kind of keeps snowballing for him. And I know there's a lot of people who 
kind of are JMO haters who don't really care for him right now. They see him as a bit of a bust and they don't really want him on this team. So this is just another thing to add on that they can, you know, just piggyback on and say, hey, JMO is not a, a grit person. He's not for the team. He's not for mm -hmm. what we're trying to accomplish here with this team and this year. But for me, JMO, I still got your back, man. Like, regardless, you're, you're maturing. I know these are still simple and silly mistakes that you just kind of got to over overcome, but at the same time, it does take time. We can't just throw him away just because of this an, another incident right now. He's doing the right things, just it, he's just not catching on as quick as we need him to. Yeah, so. and, and you know what you brought up as well. If the organization is in a position to where you know they trust his character, they've they've said they've said themselves from the podium, he has some growing up to do. Yeah. And if that's what they believe it is, more so than character issues, mm -hmm. I trust their judgment. And that's where I just I keep it in, in the right. sense of disappointed, let's mature, let's get rid of the noise. And the, the Dan Campbell comments about the, you know, them giving him rope and maybe him slipping off of the rope, they kind of make sense now when you put <laughs> yeah. everything over the last couple of weeks into perspective now. But they they stand they are standing by him. Um and you know, you wonder if Cam Sutton, maybe if he hadn't to deal with he did, I think the Lions would have stuck by him as well. They seem to be an organization that are understanding of certain situations and are willing to work with the player if the player is worthy of being worked with, if that makes sense. Yes, and uh, that it, the Lions did know about it before the PES suspension, and he played immediately, and that definitely has a big factor in all of this.